so, you know, I kind of tackle. I remember my clothes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome to United Fellowship Chapel. Let's have a few words. Well, the Father God, as we come together here today, we ask for your instant light of protection your place around and through each and every one. Let only the highest and best will come forth in our thoughts, words, and actions. And through those thoughts, words, and actions, let it lead to a better understanding of our own self. So we lead those on our path to a better understanding of them and of yourself. Amen. Amen. We can be in vocation. We speak these words together. All knowing which are within us, us hallowed be thy name. Ignite our understanding, understanding that we are eternal spiritual beings with, with the power to create happiness, health, and wealth in our lives. Ignite our understanding that our choices belong to us and are the seeds that create our lives. Ignite forgiveness of self as we ignite forgiveness of others. We give thanks for the power and the glory of God. Let's take a few moments and let those words really be activated and ignite within us. None of that is our affirmation that we say joyfully and enthusiastically. I am and that I am the light of the living, living God, God, and therefore I am free and all knowing. Ignite my soul with thy spirit, O oh God. I pray. Now, the other part of the program, our events this upcoming week, uh, we have a full moon uh, ceremony on Thursday, the, the 24th. And Saturday, we're going to journey through the sun with Dr. Beck. Our healing meditation today is Sabine. Sabine. You're muted, Sabine, just so you know. You're muted. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. All right, so let's go to our meditation. Gently close your eyes and draw attention to your breath. Take a deep breath, the deepest you've taken all day. Find a comfortable position. Imagine you're cuddled up in your favorite chair. Feel it supporting you. Take a deep cleansing breath and breathe out the tension in your body. Feel your body relax. It is warm and cozy in the room. Allow the relaxation to spread over your feet and ankles. Follow the rhythm of your breath in and out. Feel your breathing slow down and feel the relaxation following to your lower legs, to your knees, Continuing to your upper legs and hips. Let go of anything you don't need. Just sit and breathe in and out. Let any thoughts you may have just effortless, effortlessly flow through your mind and focus on your breath in and out. Feel your body sinking deeper in your warm, comfy chair while your stomach and lower back relax. And take another deep, healing breath in and out. Now let me take you to a place that will free your mind of any worries, your body of all tension. When you get there, notice the healing sensation of sitting still, of watching and noticing. You're sitting on a boulder by the most beautiful glacier lake. The air is 
the sun warm on your face. Just sit and breathe and feel the troubles float away on the gentle breezes. Imagine the trees, the tall pines full of singing birds. Allow the relaxation to continue to spread to your upper arms, to your elbows, your lower arms, your hands and fingers while you sit. The lake is a bold and brilliant turquoise. The water is so clear you can see the bottom. You feel the relaxation continue to your shoulders and your neck, just sitting, just watching, just noticing. Your head is relaxed. You're feeling any tension that may still be lingering leave your body. Relax and release. Notice your eyes and eyebrows relaxing, your nose, your mouth, your chin. Imagine puffy white clouds hanging lazily over the tallest peaks. The breeze is gently blowing and the sun feels warm on your skin. The sky is a bright blue, rays of sunshine reflecting the lake. Everything is still. There's only peace and quiet. Let's pause and stay here for a while. All tension has left your body. All worries left your mind. It's time to leave the lake. Back to your favorite comfy chair. You feel very relaxed, warm and cozy. Take one last slow breath here. And when you are ready to open your eyes and know that you can go back to this place anytime you need to, remember the healing feelings you just encountered. And I'll leave you with this closing meditation prayer. Mother, Father, God, thank you for giving us the opportunity for this healing meditation. May each of you, each of us go on with their day with your healing energy. Amen. Thank you, Sabine. You're welcome. Now that we've had a nice meditation, we're going to be receptive to the speaker today, which is one that has made tremendous understandings of metaphysics in her life. And I know what the words she's going to say today is going to ignite that in you. Reverend Marsha Zimmerman. Thank you, Reverend David. And thank you, Sabine, for that beautiful meditation. That felt really good. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. afternoon. The topic for the month is change and the focus for this week is giving up what belongs to others. As, as a child growing up, I understood choices in life to be one of two options, make the right choice or make the wrong choice. And everything seemed to be a set of rules that were explained by my parents, by my teachers and by my friends. But I always felt that something didn't feel right about the way that rules were explained to me. I was always expected to adhere to someone else's right way. For most of my professional life, I was a financial accountant. And financial accounting rules make perfect sense to me. 
everything is in balance. If something changes, then the other side of the equation changes as well. To me, everything is in order in accounting. If something is out of balance, there's a system to finding and adjusting the out of balance condition. When I first started studying the metaphysical principles, I didn't really trust the process. It seemed too simple. How could these simple principles really make changes in my life? And besides, metaphysicians take responsibility for everything that happens in life. I didn't want to take responsibility for everything. And for a while, I really believed that the principles only worked sometimes, not all the time. But I was getting benefit from being here and hearing the principles discussed over and over and over again. I was slowly starting to get it. And my life was becoming more and more healthy. And as I learned from Reverend David, I needed to take what I learned and then apply it in my own way. So what are the basic formulas that I've learned? Prosperity equals happiness plus health, plus enough wealth to support my happiness and health. Happiness, health, and wealth are my goals. Another formula is that you are the creating energy in your life, and you create through your thoughts, words, and actions. And actions are created through the people, places, and things in your life. And one other formula, if you want to create change, guess what? You're already creating change all the time. You're either getting better at what you've been doing, what, you, what you're familiar with, or you're getting better at doing something new, something not yet familiar. Everything that you think, say, and do is an affirmation, whether it's something that brings about happiness, health, and wealth, or if it's bringing about unhappiness, ill health, or lack, everything you think, say, and do is a creation. So the key is to identify what's not working well or no longer serving you well, and then use the formulas to change. What thoughts are going through your head that's not bringing about happiness, health, and wealth? What's the feeling behind that thought? What sentence? Could you change to, to change that thought to that is happy, healthy, or wealthy? Make that new thought into an affirmation and say it several times a day, at least 10 times each, and you're beginning a change process. Match those words with actions that complement your new affirmation and you're building a stronger foundation for change. You are the powerful creating force in your life. <clears throat> the power to change is within you. Change is alive and active all the time. The question is, how do you wisely use that powerful creating ability? Over the years, I've probably heard Reverend David describe the way that corn grows maybe oh, several hundred times. And after the first five or six times, I thought, okay, here we go again, the corn story. Well, the meaning really sunk in for me because now I tell the corn story too. And I realized that it's not just about corn. It's also about how thoughts, words, and actions grow. It's about how happiness, health, and wealth grow. And if you're aware of what it is you're creating within yourself, you can recognize when you're planting unhappiness, ill health, and lack. Once you recognize it, then you have the opportunity to create the affirmations that assist you in replacing the thoughts, words, and actions that have been bringing you the opposite of what you really want. 
we are constantly in a process of planting and reaping. With each thought, word, and action, we're creating. We're changing our lives. By looking at the process that a seed goes through in order to produce its harvest, we can begin to create our lives with awareness rather than believing that the events in our lives are just haphazard circumstance. There's great power in that awareness. In order for a seed to be planted, the ground has to be prepared. The soil must be tilled and turned. The seed is then placed in the ground and it seems to be invisible. The actual seed is covered by the earth and yet it's there. The creative process is very active at this time. Even though it seems to be dormant, a firm foundation is being created. Eventually with nurturing and cultivating, the plant begins to come up out of the ground. And at this time, it still looks nothing like the final harvest. It takes more time to grow and to develop the strength to be able to support the eventual, the eventual harvest. When the harvest develops, it's always bigger in proportion than the original seed. An example of this is that little kernel of corn developing into a corn stalk that produces many ears of corn, each of which contain hundreds of kernels. In the corn example, the corn kernel that's planted is the cause, and the ears of corn are the effect of cultivating and nurturing the corn. So it is said that corn is the cause and corn is the effect. So the cause is the effect and the effect is the cause. This same principle is at work in our lives. We think, we speak, and we act. We're constantly planting and nurturing and harvesting as a result of what we created. Understanding this process helps you to realize that your inner thinking is actively creating your outer effects. If you have an effect, then somewhere you planted the cause. Understanding this allows us as metaphysicians to take responsibility for our lives. And in taking responsibility for your life, you can create what you want rather than what you don't want. When you get effects that are uncomfortable, you can understand that this is the harvest of something previously planted. So at the toughest of times, you're encouraged to focus on the opposite. As an example, if you feel angry, you can focus on whatever the opposite of angry is to you. Perhaps focusing on peace or contentment or joy Whatever feeling is for your highest and best. The other alternative is to create more anger. Knowing that there's a spiritual system that's always in effect allows you the opportunity to change with intent and purpose in a way that feels right for you. It makes sense that if you plant a kernel of corn in the ground, then the harvest will be corn. If you plant watermelon, then what will grow is going to be watermelon. That just makes sense. What wouldn't make sense is to expect watermelon when you planted corn. So why would someone expect to be happy if unhappy thoughts, words, and actions were constantly cultivated and nurtured? The really wonderful benefit of changing thoughts, words, and actions is that when you say no to something, you're able to say yes to something else. What very often happens is a tendency to replace, to say yes to something that's familiar. The tendency can be to say no to one thing and then end up saying yes to the same thing over and over and over just in another form. Creating something new isn't always easy because it's not familiar. The only way to make it familiar is to keep doing it 
until it becomes easier and easier. Usually when I speak on Sundays, I come up with stories from my own life that are examples of creating everyday life changes. But what kept coming to me were the little, seemingly simple things, like saying, I have all the space I need when I'm in heavy traffic. Or when I feel congested, I say over and over again, I am open and free in my thoughts, words, and actions. In the shower, I can focus on a rainbow of healing, colors just flowing around and through me, healing every fiber and every cell of my being. When I go for a walk, I often see the same birds day after day. And I say good morning to them and tell them how beautiful they are. What I work on doing is recognizing what is it that's going through my thoughts. And if I have junk repeating itself over and over, then I replace those thoughts with something that's happy and healthy. I have a list of affirmations and I put them in places where I'll see them and remember to focus on them. Does that mean that nothing upsetting will ever happen in life? Of course not. Life is what it is. And we can do the best that we know how at any given moment. Metaphysicians take responsibility for their own lives. We are the ones who think, speak, and act every day. If you want something different for yourself, you're the one who initiates change. Something that I think is helpful is to understand that change can sometimes be accompanied by a form of grief. In order to change, you let go of something to allow something else to replace it. And that can take time for adjustment. We're not glasses that are half empty or half full. We're full all the time. We have 24 hours in a day and each of those hours are filled with something. It could be full of positive, wonderful, gratifying experiences that feel wonderful. Or it could be hours of things that are keeping you from doing the things that you truly want to ignite and strengthen within yourself. Each of us has our own responsibility. Take on the responsibility that belongs to you and allow others to take on their responsibility. Don't wait for someone else to make you happy. Create your happiness and attract others to you that are doing the same thing. One of the biggest changes that I made for myself when I was learning to apply the metaphysical principles in my own life was to change two sentences. Two sentences. It's not, doesn't seem like a very big deal. But my husband and I used to argue. He had his way of thinking about things and I had mine. And I was always taught there was a right way or a wrong way. So he must have been wrong pretty much all the time, right? I decided to start saying, I understand how you feel that way. I feel differently because of this or because of that. Two sentences. Changing that one way of thinking and speaking created more conversations and fewer arguments. And we started going for long walks and had the most amazing discussions each of us learning from one another's unique perspectives. It did take an adjustment period to get that to that peaceful place. I realized he was actually enjoying arguing and I really disliked it a lot. But having a formula to believe in, a formula that you know works every time can help you to refocus when you need to and saying affirmations that are healthy feel a whole lot better than the opposite. Your thoughts, words, and actions are the special 
creating energy that is you. Become aware. Create from a perspective of happiness, health, and enough wealth to sustain your happiness and health. You are that divine creating energy. Create your best today and each new day as it comes. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Marsha. Let us at this time take our love walk again tied and place it between our hands and let's give a blessing before we get. Mother, Father, God, and we place between our hands that which you have given us, the strength and the power to have, we give to the source, to put into the works of our love, those that meet on a path of improvement for the functioning of this abode that you place in our hands. We put into effect the law of temporal return to each and every one who gets freely from the heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the donation uh, bag is in front, just each one is going to put it in there to keep our safe distance. We thank those on Zoom who give the donation through. Oh, thank you. This is the message part of our service. And when a medium comes to you, the sound of your voice makes the contact so much better. So if you want to have a good contact, speak up. And our first medium today is going to be Reverend Marshall. Please give me two messages. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um. Okay, Reverend Michael, may I come to you? Yes, please. Reverend Michael, as I connect with your energy, what I'm feeling, I'm getting a feeling of, um, okay, this feels like movement. It feels like, um, like, walking um well i'm feeling okay so i'm feeling both my my legs moving but i'm feeling my arms moving as well and it um and as i'm um as i'm feeling this movement i'm feeling um my energy just um getting stronger and stronger and so that's what i'm that's what i'm feeling for you is um is getting movement, um, using movement to um, ignite your, um, your inner energy. Um, and you'll be getting more and more ideas um, will just be coming forth uh, in just through that movement. And I'd like to leave that with you. God bless you. Thank you. Leslie, may I come to you? We couldn't hear you. I didn't hear your, yeah, I didn't hear your voice. Yes, please. Can you hear that? Oh, yes, I sure did. Thank you Fantastic. so much. Thank you. Leslie, as I connect with your energy, what I'm feeling, I'm getting a, I'm getting a feeling of, um, Okay, so this is coming from several different areas. I'm um, I'm feeling energy in in my shoulders, um, and it feels like um, strength in taking on uh, the responsibility that belongs to you. I'm also getting at the same time I'm feeling um, an energy that 
it feels like it's it comes from from the breath, just making sure that you take the time to um, really breathe deeply where you feel your belly rise. And, um, and that those breaths help to energize the, um, the information that you need to move forward at that, at that moment. Um, and I'm feeling that it's something connected with, uh, with communication with this as well. So in, in some way, there's going to be um, a way of communicating that will be um, much stronger um, for you, um, utilizing your breath and taking on the responsibility that, that only belongs to you. And I'd like to leave that with you. God bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Marcia. Next meeting we have is Roberta. Give one message, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Reverend Marsha, may I come to you, please? Yes, please. Reverend Marsha, I feel um, the energy of, of your talk you gave today was clearly, um, clearly something spirit wanted to touch upon because I'm hearing, first of all, I'm seeing a, a beautiful dragonfly just sort of slowly just kind of land right on top of your heart. And, and that is, is such a story of transformation, the power of transformation. And specifically, they're talking about, I'm hearing the word alchemy, and they want to talk about the word alchemy, and this idea of taking simple things and um, simple materials and turning them to precious gold. And so much of what you talked about really, really hit on that. But they're, they're leaving me with a sense of this idea of, of how centered you are, there's a, a real strength. I feel it as like a column that stretches all the way through me. And um, this centeredness, this ability is, um, is a, an incredible strength for you. And it's a gift that continues to open, which is why they're talking about alchemy. It is constantly changing and constantly moving and your gifts are ever unfolding is what I'm hearing. They're ever unfolding. But this idea of being able to come back to center is, is what is so powerful. There's a calmness there. There's a peace and um, gosh, like a generation. I feel so much energy around this for you. Um, so continue to work that gift. And I, I really, truly feel like I, I possibly have your, um, your alchemist here with me, you know, uh, working a guide with me, um, sharing this information with you. So, so add a girl and uh, keep on going. It's, it's, only, it's only growing. And I leave that with you. Thank you so much, Roberta. Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. Thank now you. I call on Kim. One message, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Jennifer, may I come to you, please? Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, Jennifer, when 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 I, I close my eyes, I get this sense of hands all around you, a lot of hands. And it's, um, I feel like it's a lot of strength, security and protection is also around you, a lot of um, protection. And also it's saying, uh, spirit is telling me that when you are in like a, a grocery store or a gas station, somewhere where you don't really expect um to, to know the person, but to lend that helping hand, to reach out, to offer your hand, um, and you're going to be guided to someone that's going to need your, your help. And, and then, um, and, and also view your hand. Um, once you look at your hand, that's a symbol of you. Um, your, your hands are very powerful. Um, and not only do you nurture yourself with your hands, but you can nurture other people, whether it's um, with a hug or um, just helping with your healing hands. Um, I'm also feeling like, like even you can do work with your hands of healing hands um, that you're going to be able to comfort so many people with, with your hands. And um, these your hands are also going to help you complete some type of task. Um, 
and express yourself in ways that words cannot. And as I see this, I see my hand doing this going. <laughs> so um, what kind of expression that is, you'll, you'll know what that is. But your hands are there to remind you that you have a choice um, and your choice is yours. So take care of your hands. And I leave that with you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Now I'd like to call on Sabine. One message, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Roberta, may I come to you? Yes, thank you. Hi, Roberta. Um, as I come to you, Roberta, I am... We used, to, we used to go on this walk a lot when we were visiting my in-laws um, in the south of France. And it's this um, walk and it's in a neighborhood and it you would come to the top of the neighborhood and there would be this roadblock. And the message is like the, the roadblock is there for the cars. It's not there for you. Um, so just hop on over, over, over the roadblock. And, and we did this and beyond there is just pure nature going on. And then there was a fence also. And then we were really naughty and we went through the fence and it just continues. It's just, it was just so beautiful. And it, it, it was, it was just, just saying yes in the moment, like be in the moment, don't think too much, do something fun. Um, and it's just that, that lightness of doing something different, a new little adventure. Um, just saying yes to it and embracing it and it's gonna help with like your own like um personal power within yourself that personal growth and um and i leave that with you thank you thank you very much <laughs> thank you sabine you're welcome Karen. one message okay good afternoon good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Sabine, may I come to you? Yes, please. <clears throat> um, okay, Sabine. Um, what spirit is uh, showing me here is um, there's a little bit of an obstacle between uh, point A and point B um that's gonna be if it's not here it's coming up and you know you're here and you know you want to be over there but it seems like a big a big drop off you know a cliff between here and there and oh no what you know i want to be there it's so close um just remember that uh even though your destination seems like it's only this far away um and it, and it seems like there's a uh something that's that's impassable between that, you know what I mean? Like a, um, a, a hang up in your trying to get where you're going. Um, remember to just, to take a, to take a moment and just kind of, you know, check to your right. Cause there, there'll be a little path and it might take one or two more steps, but it'll be smooth and easy and it, and it won't be the shortest route, but it'll get you there, uh, just the same. Um, so don't don't get flustered by that gap between point A and point B. Just take the little side step around it, and it'll be just fine. You'll still get there. And I leave that with you. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Next meeting is Jennifer. One message, please. Good day. Good day. Good day. Erin, may I come to you? Please do. Aaron, as I come into your presence today, the symbol and sensing that I, the feelings that I'm getting are that it's, it's not black and white. Where you're at, where you're going. Uh, in this next week, Aaron, be in the quiet. Don't jump right to the logic. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, use your heart. Listen to the silence, the messages that you get there. They will 
see the direction for you to go to. Look for that. And I leave that with you. Thank you. Hear anything in chapel anymore? Did it get muted? I'm thinking, yeah, we can only hear each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can you guys hear us? Don't know if they can. Looks like Rachel did a thumbs up. Okay, fantastic. Okay, can you hear us? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good, may I come to you? <laughs> yes, you may. Thank you. Words look to the program. You know what these words mean in context to what you're going through right now. There's a program and you're following it and sometimes the program can change and it's just a call to check in with yourself from time to time as you go along fulfilling this program that you have in front of you. So it's a reminder just to check in with yourself and with your program and I'll leave that with you. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Who said, sir? <laughs> Our next meeting was Arlene. Give me two messages, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Reverend Ernestine, may I come to you? Yes, welcome. There's a new definition of duty coming to you, and it's a, a definition that has a lot less weight than the word can usually call for, because it, it relates to your accepting a responsibility for yourself and this, this type of responsibility. It may be a little different because it's a responsibility to, to allow yourself to be joyful. And it's uh, something that may be a little bit different than teachings from other places, but here we know that it is your responsibility and your duty to, to follow the past to give you joy. And using that as a marker as you move through the next few weeks, it'll help you make some decisions that may be different than the ones you were making before, but it is legitimate. I'll leave that with you. Thank you. Rachel, may I come to you? When I come into your presence, I see that there's a, a door that's cracked. You've been knocking on this door and you see inside the steps that you want to take. Have you been leading, leading you to this place? And this is about to change in a more dramatic way. Uh, it, it's as if there's a, a wind that blows that opens up avenues and so that you get reinforcement from people and, and places, and it seems that they come from um, someplace surprising, but they've just been on the other side of the door that you couldn't quite see through yet, and they couldn't quite see through you. But as you follow the energy that is there for you, as you continue to grow and develop, then the attraction is about to, to reach a point where in the next week or two, you're going to see some changes, and I'll leave that with you. Thank you, Arlene. Next meeting is Ernest, Reverend Ernestina. Two messages, please. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Reverend Angie, may I come to you? Yes. As I come to your presence today, Reverend Angie, I, <clears throat> what I'm seeing is um, that you've had a very 
wonderful, very nice vacation. But at the same time, it has worked out twofold because it has given you uh, much needed relaxation and that sense that you needed that. But at the same time, you have also been blessed with um, a lot of information that has come through to you in your creative self that has come through from your band. And they have definitely been with you along the way. And in the process, um, perhaps it almost seems like you've not completely brought it all in within yourself, but you're taking that time. And when you do so, as you go along the way, we are actually gonna be fortunate enough to be blessed with some of that. And I leave that with you, God bless. Thank you. Arlene, may I come to you? Yes, sir. Arlene, as I come to your presence today, I see this energy that's coming through and it's different colors. And the colors are so, that energy is vibrating and it brings envelops all around you. And it's almost magical. And it's a force that you actually work with each and every day. Um, knowingly, of course, you know that that's there. And you also bless all of us with it. And you are doing, I'm told that you are working very well with it. And we are all blessed. And I leave that with you. God bless. Thank you, Reverend Christina. Next meeting is Reverend Angie. Two messages, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Reverend David, may I come to you? Please do. I'm uh, seeing there's this uh, something green that you uh, keep. There's something green and spirit is saying, use that. Um, use that now. It's, it's that energy, that entity that works with that color for you that uh, is going to be helpful in this next week. Um, that is um, super powerful for you for this um, next adventure of what you're going to be uh, Pursuing and delivering. So I will leave that with you. Rest with you. You're welcome. Stuart, may I come to you? Hi. Stuart, um, there, I, I'm seeing like programming in front of me. I'm seeing like uh, a plan here, and um, you're looking at it almost kind of confused, like it's new. And uh, you know, you're assessing every corner and every section of this programming. Um, close your eyes and it will be told. Um, then you open your eyes and it's all there. So just trusting spirit, trust spirit. And as Ernestina said, you're banned. You have a band that helps you with this. Um, this isn't everything in your future here. So uh, anything that seems like it's a pattern that you don't understand, close your eyes and they'll show it to you. Um, just know that it's um, a very simple thing and it's not uh, something to uh, get a little bit worked up about when it's the unknown. Um, use their services, use their help in, in that workings and they will show you the way. I leave that with you. Blessings to you. Thank you, Reverend Angie. Put this away before I poke myself. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Alexander, may I come to you? Yes, please. No, Alexander, I, I, I see the symbol of, of education here uh, uh, and classes. And, 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 I, and I want you to know is that it's important for you to start doing some, some classes and uh, not just talk about them, but be present. Do, do your action with them. Because there's, there's energy, there's knowledge that's being ready to ignite. By going to those classes, you'll be able to understand the knowledge that is coming up there, not necessarily from the person who's given the class, but from, from you yourself. Uh, there's a lot of credit you're not giving yourself. So concentrate on that. I'll leave that with you, and God bless you. Jackie, may I come to you? Jackie, as a coming to your presence today, I, I, I see the symbol of order here with you. And there's a couple of... Uh, Conditions with order. One is to, of a sequence of events, another one is, is adjusting. Uh, and, and you are moving in awareness, and sometimes you don't realize that we are. And so 
when you notice that there's uh, different people that are moving in and out of your life, there's an adjustment that's going on in there. And by, by just concentrating, I am adjusting, you'll be able to feel much more better because there's different things are going to be presented to you, to, different actions to do. And those different actions will go to different places and there'll be different people doing different things and you'll be very pleased with the, the results. So act upon that. I leave that with you and God bless you. Thank you. Yes. Well, I want to thank each of you for coming and sharing this time today in this nice, cool weather. You keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's all standing, sing, let there be love. <laughs>